Hello and welcome to Informatica support videos. This is Asmita from Informatica GCS and in this video we will talk about Static Deployment Group in Informatica. The agenda of this video is to see what is Deployment Group, what is a Static Deployment Group, what are the tips for Static Deployment Group and then we will see a live demo of the same. What is a deployment group? Deployment group is a global object which is used for migration purposes. Deployment group is nothing but the list or you can say group of in power center objects which has to be migrated from one repository to another repository. It can have the objects from one folder or from various folders. The selection of these objects can be done in two different ways which is static method or the dynamic method. So let's see what is static method. So what is a static deployment group? In static deployment group, Informatica objects can be selected from one or multiple folders. Basically, we use this deployment group when we want to migrate only few of the objects from a particular folder. In case if we want to migrate the complete folder, in that kind of situation, we can directly copy and paste the folders. That is completely different topic. Also, whenever we are using static deployment group, we have to add the objects or edit the objects or delete the objects manually. In this, only the checked in objects are allowed to be added in the deployment group. While you are adding objects to the static deployment group, you can also add the dependent objects by selecting that option. So while we will be seeing the demo, we can we'll show you how to add the dependent objects as well. So let's go ahead and see what are the tips for static deployment group. Static deployment group should be used when you know that the set of the objects which has to be deployed are not going to change in a period of time. Before you deploy, you should preview the objects that you are going to deploy. For version repositories, you will have new versions get created and deployed at the target repository. For non-version repository, the old version get deleted first and the new versions get added or created. You need to have the proper privileges and permissions like read permissions on the source and execute permission on the target while you are deploying using the deployment group. You should keep all these points in mind when you are using a static deployment group. So let's go ahead and see the demo on the same. So for the demo, I have logged in to my repository manager. You can see I have created two folders named as rs underscore source and rs underscore target. So we will be deploying from the rs underscore source repository to rs underscore target repository. So in the rs underscore source, you can see one of the folder named as deployment groups. If I click on that, you can see all the list of deployment groups which are already existing in this particular repository. So I have one deployment group already being created here. So in case if you want to create a new deployment group, you will have to go to a particular object which you want to add in the deployment group. So let me go to my folder and then select one particular object. You need to make sure that whatever object you are going to add in the deployment group are in the checked in state. So just right click and go to view history of this particular object. You can see that one version of this particular object exists. And now we will just do a right click on this and you can see the option add to deployment group. Once you click on this option, you will be able to see the deployment group which is already created or 
you can go ahead or create and create a new deployment group so for that we have to click on new say i am naming it as demo underscore dg and in the group type i am selecting as static because here we are going to do a static deployment so once we select this we'll click ok so now you can see this deployment group being added here so i'll just select this particular deployment group and click ok so once you click ok you will be able to see that for this particular object which is a workflow we can add all dependencies, non-reversible objects or no dependencies. So if you select all dependencies, then all the objects which are dependent on this particular object would be added. If you want to add only the non-reusable ones, you can click on non-reusable. And in case if you don't want to add any dependent objects, then you can select no dependencies. Here I'm selecting all dependencies. So let me just click OK now. you will see the message like added the selected object to the deployment group which means that this particular object with all its dependencies has been added to the deployment group we created. Let me click OK and go to the deployment group now. So I'll just go to my deployment group and I can see all the objects which were dependent on this particular workflow have been listed here. Now we will go ahead and add this deployment group to our target repository. So there are two methods to do the same. Let us see one by one both of them. So the first method is just to click on the deployment group. Go to edit. Click on copy. So the deployment group has been copied. Then you need to select your target repository. Make sure you select your target repository again go to edit and you can just paste the deployment group here so once the paste is done you will see the deployment group wizard being opened so let me show you the another method and then we will proceed with the next steps in this so i'll just cancel this now okay so the second method is to just drag and drop this particular deployment group to the repository target repository so let me just drag this and we'll drop it to the target repository so we will again see that same deployment group wizard being opened so now we will proceed with the next steps in the deployment so i'll show you the advanced option which are present here so we'll just click on next so we can see the source folder and target folder here. In case if you want to change the target folder, you can click on override and select whatever folder you want to select. Since I don't want to change it, I'm just clicking on cancel and then we will click on next. So this is giving me a warning that the fo target folder may not uh, exist in the target folder uh, in the target repository, but I'll just uh, say continue and I'll proceed with the next uh, and the here you will get the option to select or check the folder so i am using the same folder i'll click next you will see that the folder one of the source is being getting compared to the folder one of the target and here is the result of that so it says that whatever differences whatever similarities are there whatever outdated objects are there you can just click on next Again, we'll if you want to attach any labels, you can provide here. I don't want to attach, so I'm clicking next. Here again, you will see multiple options of the deployment groups which you can check or uncheck depending upon the use case, like persistent values in the mapping variables and the values in the current value is in the sequence generator and all. So you can Keep clicking next and just 
select the option which you want to select. Here is this copy deployment group. Yes, I want to just copy it. I'll click on next. Okay, next. And then I'll again click next. So there is an option to validate all the objects in the target repository. I'll just click next. This is the last step which uh, is finished. I'll just click on finish now. So we can see that uh, it's analyzing the dependencies and all the processes is happening. Then it is copying the metadata and then the dependent objects and the shortcuts which we have. And then it will be finally saving the deployment information. So we will, it, this will take some few minutes or depending upon how big is your deployment group. Okay, so with this, our deployment is successful. We can see this deployment group has been deployed here successfully with all the objects here. Now we will see how to do rollback of this deployment group. So we need to make one a note with what is which is like the rollback can only happen at the target repository side. So let's see how to do that. So to roll back the deployment, we just need to select the deployment group. So this is the latest one which we just deployed uh, now. You need to go to tools and then you need to go to deployment and select history. So you can see that uh, recently two times the deployment happened and uh, this, uh, this is the one which is the latest. So you need to click on view history. So once you click on view history, you can see uh, once you select the deployment, uh, you can see the rollback option here enabled. So I'll just click on rollback. So once you click on rollback, you can see the message as rollback su succeeded. So which means the deployment which we did just now has been successfully rolled, rolled back. I'll click OK. And I'll close it. So I'll just do a refresh of this particular repository here. So once you refresh, you can see that this deployment group does not have any objects which we deployed. So with this, the rollback is successful. So one more thing you need to note down here is, in my case, the source and the target, both the repositories are version repository and hence the rollback option was enabled. In case if you are deploying from a version to a non-version repository, then the rollback option will not be available because it will be just having the one version of the particular objects. So with this, we finish our demo session. You can refer to our knowledge base articles in case if you face any issues while doing this deployment activity. Also, you can refer to our command reference guide in case if you want to do the deployment using the commands. We would love to hear from you. You can write to us on support videos at the rate informatica.com or tweet us on InfoSupport. Thank you so much for your time.